All right, Matthews, let's wrap up 5.4. So now we're on page 142 of the student journal, and we're going to do a few of these problems up top. So, all right, step one, isolate the radical. X to the 5 halves, that's the radical, so we want to get 1 half to the other side. So we'll multiply each side by 2 to get the 1 half to go over here. So now we've got x to the 5 halves over here, and over here we've got equals 32. Okay, so uh, what is the opposite? How do you get rid of something being raised to the 5 halves power? So the way you would do that is you would raise this to the 2 fifths. I just took the reciprocal of it, because if you multiply by a reciprocal, that gets you to 1. Uh, so that would be just x, x to the first. So I'm going to raise this to the 2 fifth power. I'll do this as well. So these will cancel out, and I just get x over here. Now over here, okay, so this is, uh, this is why we memorized uh, those, those roots the other day. So the fifth root of 32, fifth root of 32 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So x equals 4 is our answer. We just have to plug that in and make sure it works. Okay, so let's put a 4 in here for x. So uh, if, if this was a 4, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the fifth power is 32, Half of 32 is 16, so that checks out. Okay, very good. All right, now we're on to number 12. All right, so here we're going to isolate the radical, so we have to move the 28 first, so minus 28. Okay, so that's going to be 4, 6, so, so that's going to be 126. So 6x plus 10 to the 7 thirds equals 126. All right, so now I've got the radical isolated, so I'll um, raise this to the reciprocal. So I'll raise this to the 3 sevenths, and I'll raise this to the 3 sevenths. Okay, so on this side, we just have 6x plus 10. And then over here, okay, um, 126, the 3 seventh root. I'm just going to have to put that into my calculator. So the seventh root, excuse me, the seventh, seventh math, seventh root of 126. And then if I raise that to the third, it's because it's not 126. 16 minus 8 is 8. Okay, now I can do this in my head. The seventh root of 128 is 2. 2 to the third power is 8. Sorry about that mistake, but we fixed it. All right, so now we've got minus 10, minus 10. 6x equals negative 2 divided by 6. Okay, so x we suspect equals negative 1 third. We need to make sure. So let's do that real quick. So negative one-third times six would be negative two. Ten minus two would be eight. The cubed root of eight is two. Two to the seventh power is 126. 126 plus 128 is 156. That does check out. Okay, very good. All right, so now we're going to do some inequalities. Same deal, except we've got a, like in here we've got a greater than or equal to sign. To sign. So let's do number 13. So uh, still, first step is the same. Isolate the radical. Negative four. Okay, so now we have to divide each side by negative four. So this is an inequality rule. You might remember back from years ago that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, that's when you have to switch the sign. So in our next step, when we cancel these out and rewrite things, so we'll have square root of x minus 1. Uh, in this step, this is going to have to get flipped this way. Uh, negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. Now we'll square each side. So I have x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1, add 1 to each side. Okay, so now we're going to have x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so uh, with the 
inequalities, we now have x is less than or equal to 2. There's a weird thing you got to do with inequalities. So there might be more than this, and here's how you check at the end. So if we look back up and we just look at the radical, so this is a square root, and you'll notice that when you take square roots, square roots can't go negative. Like, they can, but they're imaginary. And so these are real solutions we're looking for. So we have to ask ourselves, what would make this root, the square root, turn negative? So if we put a 1 here, 1 minus 1 is 0, and that's okay. It's okay for it to be zero, but if this was anything less than one, like if it was uh, if it was zero, for example, zero minus one is negative one, then all of a sudden we're taking the square root of a negative and it's an imaginary number. And we're just trying to find the real solutions here. So one is our cutoff point where this is gonna turn into zero, anything more, and it would go negative. So x has to be less than or equal to two but it has to be greater than or equal to 1, because if this got any less than 1, it would turn this part negative, and then you would have imaginary solutions. So these are the only place where you can find real solutions. All right, we're going to do number 14, and then we'll call it good. Okay, so here I've got a third root, and I just want to start out by saying that third roots are allowed to turn negative. So on this one, we're not going to have to do this step over here. Uh, so let's isolate the radical. Done. We'll raise each one to the third power because it's a third root. So that gives me 2 thirds x plus 1 is less than 6 to the third. Uh, well, we got there 218. So we'll subtract 1. 2 thirds x is less than... 217. So now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll multiply each side by 3 halves. And I cannot do that in my head. So it's less than. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. My sneezes usually come in twos. <coughs> There's the other one. All right, let's finish this up. 217 times 3 halves. 3 divided by 2. All right, x has to be less than 325.5. Great. All right. Uh, number 15 is one that I want you to work on on your own. Um, that should be very similar to uh, number 13 in that it's a square root here. So you're going to have it be a compound inequality. Uh, let's see, I will tell you right now that uh, this is going to be, uh, as an answer, 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 65 and a third. All right, very good. And one more thing before I leave. Okay, I made a mistake on this one. Uh, the If you do 6 to the third root, you don't get 218. You get 216. I suspected that I had made a mistake here. Okay, so that means that if I follow it to this step now, now I've got 2 thirds x is less than 200, and after we subtract the 1, 215. And then if I multiply this by 3 halves, now I'm going to get 215 times. There we go, 322. So x has to be less than 322.5. Sorry about that mistake. And if you want to try number 15 on your own, uh, this is the answer you'll get to know that you're right. After that, you can work on the explorations, and you can start the homework. Good luck.